Hey guys, thank you for coming here. I definitely didn't expect 60 people to come. So thank you all for coming here and big thanks to all people to made it happen. Wait, something is wrong. Something is definitely wrong. Yeah, I can hear myself. <laughs> it's fixed. I just let it go for a sec. So, can you hear me alright? Is everything alright with the sound now? Okay. So, let's, let's start. Uh, I wanted to say thanks to people who made this happen, who made these 60 people coming to the stream happen which is uh, people from Arctum Discord and the League of Machinima. Okay, uh, so, uh, for those who don't know me, uh, for about a year and a half, uh, since January 2017, I've been working on this add-in that you can see here, uh, which in theory should allow you to import and export WoW 3D assets uh, from the game and back. And I know, uh, well, I guess I should turn off this following, following text from just a sec, guys. I think it should be gone by now. Okay. Uh, so I think there are two kinds of people who are here to watch the stream. The first would be Machinima artist, uh, who artists who mostly care about the way the models are imported and we're definitely going to be covering this and the rest would probably be WoW modders who want to know how all of this can be put back into the game <laughs> all right leechers too uh, so I will, I will kind of try to cover both of this in the stream but you know if I'm just talking about something that you are not interested in you might need to wait a little bit before I come to your personal part of this. Uh, so uh, let's just uh, I'll I'll tell a few words about how this all started and so on. Like what what is this all for? Basically, I started this uh, based on someone else's work first in 2017, but now there is only my code in the set and nothing else. So everything got written, and from just going to use this uh, as a like tool for my personal project I went to uh, making it sort of public for everybody else uh, and apparently I wasn't sure till this week for Machinima mar artists to because I was not sure if I'll be able to render uh, the assets exactly the same way as the game does but apparently it's possible uh, so the first thing that I will start with probably is the import of assets, which is uh, logical and uh, the f like the main reason why you need to use this software compared to, you know, different th different solutions that you have like WoW Model View or something else that you might be using is that uh, this thing allows you to get assets from WoW uh, significantly faster than anything else that I know of. Let's just show me, let's just close the scene that I made for uh, for the beginning of the stream. And let's find some model here. This is, uh, this human in that I've been testing my rendering on is the perfect choice for this, I guess. So this is pretty much all it takes about like five seconds to get the model uh, from WoW model viewer from your game uh, to Blender, and if you can see, uh, it comes it comes with a good material. It looks just kind of like it looks in the game. And if we look here, this this white stuff is collision geometry. That's not something important for uh, machinima artists, but uh, motors should probably make use of it. And here on the panel, I can 
turn off individual parts of the model. Those are different things that are actually used in the game for lighting, for rendering uh, different groups, parts of the WMO model. Uh, so, but first we're going to focus on what, what it can do for uh, rendering, since that's probably what most peop uh, mostly people care about. As you can see, it comes, it, it just looks kind of like it looks in the game. Uh, I'll be I'll be making stops for answering questions. I'll, I'll I'll really try to follow the chat, but it's it's going really fast, so sometimes I can't notice what's going on there. Uh, I'll cover rigging in a little bit. Actually, there's a, a lot to say about rigging, but um, it will come later when we come to M2 models because right now I'm covering uh, WMOs, which probably can be used for scenery uh, in Machinima videos or can be just uh, modded to put back into the game. So as you can see, it looks kind of the same way as it looks in game. The, there are two things that I'm missing here right now. Uh, the first one would be Bloom, which the game adds uh, to the final image, so it, it looks kind of blurry. And the second one would be Fog. I don't really know um, how uh, how to implement this for now, uh, but I guess for like for Bloom, machine artists will figure it out themselves. Maybe if I am able to do that, I'll do that in the future. Uh, so will will Classic be supported? Uh, speaking about support for versions, right now this is still in development, and uh, this is going to support uh, Rest of the Lich King since it's the most popular uh, version for motors and it's really easy to emulate and so on and so forth. Then it's going to support Legion because that's what I need it for because my my project, uh, my server project is going to be based on Legion 7.3.5 and uh, it's also going to support retail hopefully BFA because you know if it's if it won't support BFA, it means that I would have to develop it for like another couple of years, or whenever the new expansion will uh, come out. Uh, but hopefully, it will be BFA. Uh, speaking about classic, uh, I'm not really sure if I should support, uh, you know, the original classic version. But if Blizzard makes this WoW classic uh, new client stuff, yeah, I might as well look at that too. Uh, actually, speaking about versions, I'd love to have all of them supported, but uh, it's just a little bit too much work, at first at least. So we'll see how it goes, and then I'll uh, I'll just look uh, at what I can do with Classic and other versions maybe, like TBC and stuff like that. Okay, uh, let's get to what we were talking about before. Uh, so. I've noticed after watching some great Machinima works on YouTube that uh, most people were getting something wrong there. Like the animation could be amazing, uh, the script and the sound and the voicing, everything was good. Uh, but what most of the videos lack is the, the good lighting because the, WoW actually uh, does lighting in a really specific way. And what, what people usually do when, uh, when they uh, start making Machinima is that they just grab WoW Model Viewer and they export this to FBX and it's losing all the vertex color. Uh, it's losing... It only comes basically with textures, it's just geometry and textures. But this is how it looks with geometry and textures. You can see it in WoW Model Viewer. It would have looked exactly the same in Blender. I can probably even show that right here, in textured solid mode. So this is just textures and raw vertex color without any manipulations in it. And after seeing this, uh, people actually uh, resort to using uh, ray traced lighting, which which looks kind of weird because uh, the game is meant to be hand painted, everything else is hand painted, and then you just uh, apply physically based lighting to it. Uh, so that's why I decided that we need precise rendering. 
the same exact thing that the game does. And with the help of uh, a few a few different guys, with the help of uh, Wow Wiki and that kind of stuff, I was able to create this. Uh, and why this is important? I mentioned Machinima, so now people that are create uh, who are creating Machinima they can use this, and also uh, the modders, people who actually want to bring their custom WMOs to the game. Uh, it's it's really important when you're working on the model to see uh, what, what your final result actually looks like. And this is not just baked. This is not baked into a texture. Uh, this is using a set of layers. Uh, each of them defines different rules of rendering uh, for the model. So we've got the vertex color, uh, for example. It's the thing that I showed you here. Uh, by default, it becomes pitch black like this, with only this uh, light parts where the designer painted them. Uh, I guess I'll stop for a second, read the questions. I'll answer to these questions in Russian. So. Yeah, for those who don't know, I'm from Russia, and they'll, I'll have to answer these guys because they don't quite understand uh, what I'm speaking about here. В общем, по поводу импорта до датсета, все там работает, уже давно с флагом инкрипта, это я все починил. И импортирует... Нет, из папки пока не импортирует, это надо будет поправить. Все, в общем, я возвращаюсь к тому, о чем я рассказывал. Если еще будут какие-то вопросы, спрашивайте. Okay, uh, <laughs> I just had to answer some questions. Well, what did I stop on? Uh, so this is vertex color, and this thing here is another uh, is another thing. It's a light map which Blizzard uses to kind of uh, alter the lightness of vertices. Then they got also this what what I call batch maps. Uh, this basically divides geometry into uh, exterior parts, interior parts, and the transition between them. So the light from the doorway can actually come through, uh, come through the doorway, and you see it on the textures. Hold on, I actually need to swap batteries in my mouse. It's just died. Fortunately, I have some spare batteries right here. Uh, so for now, while I'm swapping batteries, you can just ask me questions, I guess, about anything. Uh, yes, um, yeah, if you know how file data DB2 works, you also know how to use TXID. Yeah, that, that, that will be correct. I can use TXID and that stuff. The, the main problem is cask because I will need to plug in the library for reading cask. But that should be feasible. Uh, will this be able to import, say, a house with all the furniture important in the correct spaces as well? Or does it only import the building? Uh, that's actually a good question. And I can answer it right now. I haven't yet finished rendering for some textures, so they show up like this. But that's it. And it's coming with the colors, which is also important, because if you don't you don't have the correct color here, it's going to show up like this. Which is not quite good. Yeah, and if the house is supporting multiple sets, uh, you can switch between them. Uh, this one has a hard-coded name, uh, default global set, and it will blend with the rest of the sets. So uh, I'll, I'll show maybe later on the, a farm model. They actually have multiple sets there, and um, I'll show you how it gets sw uh, switched in between them. Uh, let me hide this anyway. So there's also a bunch of uh, different settings 
uh, here. Let me switch to cycles because in cycles I was able to implement a lot more features and this is also important to mention for machine artists because cycles is a really advanced uh, renderer uh, for Blender. Uh, it's it's doing all kinds of all kinds of ray tracing and stuff. Uh, so if we just switch to cycles right now, uh, we'll probably see nothing. Uh, but I actually fixed that, and the add-on since yesterday, it's, it's a brand new feature, so it might be bugged, but I've just finished it before the stream. Um, you can convert the materials that you have in Blender internal, which is, by the way, going to be obsolete in about like two or three months when new version of Blender comes out. This is uh, uh, going deprecated. So we switch to cycles, and then I click on this, and it's not working for some reason. But I actually, shoot. Well, pre alpha. Anyway, what I'll do now is hopefully import it this way. Cycles first. Yeah, it's working now. I'll just have to look at what this button does. Slightly bugged. So here, uh, it's looking about the same without settings. Let me uh, turn all this technical stuff off. Portals, fogs, liquids. There are no liquids in this one. Lights. Uh, these are not actually lights, by the way. Uh, I finally figured out the question. Actually, someone told me. Uh, Blizzard uses uh, this lamps uh, to cast shadows. Uh, like when your character is standing somewhere, uh, the lamp will just project something and the shadow will be uh, ray traced on the surface. Uh, but that's not what I'm going to show here. We also don't need collision for now. So, uh, as you know, in, in game, maybe someone has used uh, tools like Free Farsight or um, uh, what it used to be called, while well, machinima tools, while well, machinima tool, I actually have one right here. Uh, you probably remember that uh, lighting colors have actually a great impact on how um, how your geometry looks like uh, in game. And I've also emulated all of this stuff here. So you have these controls for colors that you can change, and we can set it to all kinds of crazy stuff. This is an ambient color, then this is a directional color, uh, which appears where the sun points. And we also got the sun direction. It's a little bit laggy uh, because it has to recompile the shader for uh, every material, but you can just switch to texture view, pose it like this, and render it in material. Okay, I'll switch back to the chat for a second. I was more wondering if if would come in as an FBX something I'm not as familiar with so I'm very happy to hear it's just an M2. Uh, so it's it's not an M2. Uh, you can export this as an FBX uh, but for now it will get lost I think. Uh, all of this stuff will get lost because I, I don't know of any software that's, um, you know, uh, exporting Blender materials to other things. Uh, but what I really recommend you to do is that uh, have a look at Blender. Have a look at Blender 2.8 uh, because uh, Blender 2.8 is, uh, is going in a completely new direction. It's, it's uh, really simplifying a lot of the UI. I know a lot of people who try Blender, um, you know, they um, have problems with the UI, the controls and stuff like that. So I really recommend you to have a look at, uh, at that, at the new version. Uh, but as I said in the description uh, of this stream, uh, I actually, actually, I think I found a way to export that, uh, but I, I'm not really sure yet if that's going to be successful. So uh, I'll try to find ways for 
people using other 3D software to be at least able to export that. Maybe some kind of baking would work or something like that. I I, I don't know yet. Actually, I, I remember that long ago in Blender there was a feature that allowed you to export uh, materials as GLSL code, which would work in 3ds Max and uh, Maya for sure because they support uh, shaders. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's let's get to these features. So this one is controlling the sunlight. It will be visible better with uh, adequate colors. So I'll bring this back. This is just the default color uh, that I have here. And if I move the sun, it's getting really laggy when I'm doing this in material mode. But I can like do it this way. So it's facing. It's coming directly from our face, I guess, like this. So basically you can change the direction just like in game. That's that's all about it. Nothing to see here. Uh, another setting here is uh, CIDN intensity. I actually don't know myself what this uh, SIDN stands for, uh, but what it does, it actually alters the way uh, the glowing parts of the mesh look like. Uh, not at the moment, but I'm working on it. And despite what you think, terrain is actually easy, easier than all this stuff. It's way easier. And I'll, I'll be working on that. I probably won't support export for terrain, at least like proper export, like map editor, but I'll definitely support importing it with textures, models, and grass. And yes, it will have uh, generated, uh, generated grass preset. So it will be reading uh, the preset for grass from DBC, and uh, it will be applying a hair particle on on the surface and the grass will be looking just like in game or about the same uh, custom WMOs in Legion uh, yes for sure uh, because my my personal project and you can actually find the link to it in the description it's right here it's gonna um, it's gonna use Legion as an emulator and I kind of have to do this uh, well, so what did I stop on? The CID and stuff. Okay, uh, this this value is controlling the brightness of window glow. So you can actually flag the materials to uh, have this, uh, this sort of uh, night glow effect. This is the same as the game does. And you can change the emissive color of the material. So you can create all kinds of atmospheres with that. In the future, I'll add like a time option so you can create this uh, day-night cycles for animations just like uh, any other uh, like Free Fire Side or Wild Machinima tool does. That sort of stuff. And you can of course turn it off and on the materials. Uh, not all the flags are going to be supported, but uh, the one that I've made so far is um, unlit. It's it's only working in interior models because Blizzard has decided so, I think, in interior groups. Or maybe not, maybe in exterior, I don't remember. It's all too complicated. Yeah, like this. So this this is essentially going to ignore all the light on the model. Okay, and let's get to fancy stuff for the motors. So as I mentioned before, you will be able to paint lightness and uh, vertex colors and seeing the result immediately the same way as you see it in the game. And just to prove that it looks about the same as in the game, I'll actually go to one. So, so someone, uh, someone is uh, complaining about me making weird sounds apparently here. I is that true?
Well, I'm just drinking water sometimes because your mouth gets dry when you talk continuously for like about what 26 minutes already. Uh, well, that's actually that's actually something from my custom project that I'll show you in the beginning of the, uh, in the end of the stream for those people who are interested. But for now, we'll go to Northern to check this in the way it looks. And yeah, my computer is trash. It's taken ages to load Northern even in Breath of the Lich King. Hopefully it won't die when I'll be opening sinks with giant models uh, later on. Because I've got, I've got something to show. Because I know that people have been wondering if it's possible to import Stormwind. Okay, where is that fortress? I think it was there. I'll show you the wall later, in the end of the stream, at the end, we should keep the English correct. Uh, okay, so that that's it, and it, it's a little bit brighter now because uh, the bloom effect is making it brighter and there are also light emitters in, in this lanterns, uh, but that's, it's still looking about the same and I'll probably do something about this. Since those are ray traced lights, uh, lights I think. Um, but there is a lot more than you can uh, that you can do with this system. So there is a setting here. Uh, ignore the names. Uh, they were just something random that uh, I wrote here like about a year ago when I didn't know what all these settings are doing. So I was just trying to name them somehow. So it, it's looking so bright right now because it's it's now it's it's using the light map uh, to create uh, to actually like uh, attenuate the vertices here so they look much brighter. And I'm showing you this because uh, this is the feature that can be used actively both from machinima artists and uh, modders. This will definitely work in game as well. There's uh, there's an option just like that in the game. Okay, Let me just pick up something. So it, by default, light map is full full white. That's why it's so bright. It's actually painting on the wrong color. So you see this? This is not Maya, by the way. And I was painting on the wrong color again. So I need to get back, and remove this mess, and then come here. Yeah, just like this. So this thing allows you to paint the lighting. This is what Blizzard is using for lighting up stuff. So as you can see, the vertex color remains underneath. It's still there. But it's not bright. So uh, this feature uh, is is about the same as uh, what you would do if light like you, you can get this result. You can get this result. Uh, hold on. Uh, just without this uh, light map feature, uh, was putting a light map to uh, while you. 0.25 it's going to be the same so if I set my brush to 0.25 it's going to do the same result as without this uh, uh, without this setting this way you can avoid having crazy colors and only uh, paint this nice lighting where you need it uh, and that stuff is appearing here because this is a border of the transitional batch which blends the lighting from outside with the uh, lighting from inside. And on this batch, the light map actually works to blend the exterior light inside the building. This way you can have this like realistic, almost like ray traced trace, trails of light coming from uh, 
the doorway to the main geometry. Anyway, let's turn this off. And I almost forgot about this. Uh, you can you can create atmospheres for almost all the objects that uh, you import, uh, which came out of uh, out uh, which came out after Wrath of the Lich King was released. So from Wrath of the Lich King to the modern game, uh, the models support interior ambient colors. So if you need something like create some kind of mysterious atmosphere, you can just set it to green, or blue, and it all works just in seconds. You can create an entirely new lighting. Uh, this is apparently something that uh, none of these tools before was actually doing uh, because it was not able to alter this color. Uh, no, I I'm reading the chat. I really hope that the add-in will be released way before 2020, hopefully. Anyway, let's get to more interesting things, I guess. I won't really be covering uh, the technical parts like portals, fogs, liquids, because this is pretty much self-explanatory. You just need to know that all this stuff is supported. It's been supported for a while and uh, it all works. So you don't need to worry about this. And one of the recent features that I've made is separating collision from the main geometry because it was getting in the way and was looking annoying. <laughs> oh well. What else should I say about double mouse? I guess that's pretty much it. So now I'll just show you some some of the pre-made things that I've imported uh, to show on the stream. They take quite a few minutes to import. Uh, Stormwind, for example, took about 12 minutes to import with all the doodad sets and I guess we'll start with it just to show you guys that it's possible to import Stormwind uh, in a few seconds well not a few seconds I mean like compared to uh, a lot of people who have been saying that uh, they worked for months on trying to recreate Stormwind uh, actually not Actually not. Uh, I think I think Stormin is still the biggest double uh, WMO of uh, all in the game. What is this? Don't need this for now. It's really taking a lot now. Guess I need to close this instant of instance of Blender. It's just my computer not been able to handle so uh, so many geometry rendered uh, when I'm also streaming. I think that's the problem. I think I've tried Zoramar before. I was about to close it. That's how it always happens. It's afraid of the task manager. Uh, well, 3 FPS now, but trust me, it's a lot better when you're not streaming, at least on my computer. For someone who's got like 1080 Ti, it's gonna be no problem. The, yes, this is old Stormwind, but it's, it's, it's about the same in polygons. Like, the new one is just a few separate models. Hold on, I'll, I'll just show you. I'll just show you. I actually really have a lot of questions to the person who, who made this storm because that, that ugly fortress, I, I have no idea how it made its way to the game. Uh, do that, so all there. They, they were just not rendered. I hide them by default because I knew that uh, my computer will die if I turn uh, turn on the doodads when I open the blend file. Uh, let's just go with straight district. So here's uh, 
create district Dublin though. Where is it? I could see the additional files, but not the main one. I need the main one for this. I guess I can just do trade district. Yep. Um, I know what order the alphabet is. I'm just, it's all, it's past midnight right now. What do you want from me? Oh well. A lot of unknown stuff. I've actually never had this before. I'm now wondering what, what this chunk is. Uh, yeah, it's uh, so hacks for drugs. It, it's possible to uh, to make the double most look realistic, uh, but why? That's that's the problem with most machinima videos. They just look way too realistic when they're supposed to look hand painted. You can do all all kind of all kinds of stuff. You can just turn that shit on that I created. All this like lighting layers. You can just scrap it and render it the way you've been doing it for ages. It still works and it's still faster than using file model viewer. Uh, no, my model viewer is is for Wrath the Lich King, but it doesn't matter which one you use. I've uh, I'm supporting all of this. It's doing this breach with the viewer lock file. So here it is, the trade district. In how how many seconds? 46 seconds in the trade district and for this I can actually turn on the doodads so you guys see that it all works uh, there's probably gonna be a problem with uh, colors or maybe not it actually look quite fine let me turn this stuff off hold on it's much easier to do when you're not rendering the textures Let's look inside the buildings. I guess it's looking about the same, uh, but th this model is looking uh, is using classic render rendering paths, so it might be a little bit wrong. Uh, the foundations. I have no idea. Uh, this uh, this model might as well be from Cataclysm Alpha. I don't know, or the, oh, I probably know where it is. The fountain is placed on the terrain file. It's it's separate object. Uh, when I'll have terrain, this is not going to be a problem anymore. Like you'll have your fountain there. Well, that's about it. Uh, let me show you some other cool stuff. Uh, as Sephora suggested, I'll show you the blend map, something something really cool about uh, the new materials that they introduced in Breath of the Lich King. Uh, but for now, let's just have a look at Dalaran. It's the old one. I know there are people out there who really, really want to uh, get Dalaran 2 at the moment, but it's, it's not really possible right now. Uh, because uh, Dalaran 2 is using uh, a lot more materials than the original version. It's using like uh, this extended material ID. So I, I can't really import it now uh, until I update my add-on to support Legion. Yeah, this, this one is probably gonna be worse than Stormwind. Or maybe not. I think Stormin was loading longer. 
uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. To show you this cool place here, if Blender will allow me, because right now it's stuck. Uh, 2.8 is coming out in December, I think, or about so. Uh, uh, what kind of colon are you talking about? All oh, right, I actually missed the question. I'm sorry about that. I'll, I'll read it now. Uh, do you think you can implement some sort of cooling for M2s to improve performance when navigating around large places like Stormwind? Uh, potentially in the future when 2.8 comes out, because they're working on something. Um, they're working on something called interactive mode for Blender, which is essentially going to be the replacement for old Blender game engine, which is getting removed uh, into 2.79 is the last version that supports game engine. And they will be replacing it with something more simple, something that can be used for like web rendering, stuff like that. Uh, I, I can't really enable do that sets, but trust me, they're all there. They're all, there. They're all working. It's just uh, my my computer won't handle it. It will it will just burn if I do that because Dalaran with do that sets, it's it's crazy. Uh, but just to show you the comparison once again, I'm I'm trying to emphasize the importance of this stuff. Look at this. It's not the same. It's way darker. Way darker. And someone is currently bombarding my Discord with messages. I'm sorry, I can't really have a look at that right now. Uh, just uh, I'll answer everything there after the stream. Well, that's basically it. And just to show you the behavior that the batches do, because I actually noticed that it's really it's really visible in one place here. See this little exit from the sewers. And you can see how the light from the outside is blended, just like in-game. So, just once again, look at this. This is really important for lighting. Okay, uh, let's... I guess I can show Ironforge with all the doodads. And then we'll probably switch to M2s, which are going to be a little bit more interesting, a little bit more interactive, and so on. Yeah, this model suggests uh, a little of my, uh, a little set of my testing puppies for different reasons. So this is Iron Forge. It's probably quite recognizable here. And let's try. I really hope it doesn't burn down my computer right now. Uh, but just keep in mind that do that rendering is not finished yet. The colors are wrong, the transparency is wrong, as you can see, but it, they're all here. Correct positions, correct rotations, correct scales. Actually, I'll scroll back a little bit. Uh, someone was asking, uh, can you scale WMOs in your tool? Yes, you can. You just scale them up and you export them back. Well, or down if you want them smaller. Uh, but just just to make sure that you know, in Legion it's possible to scale WMOs when you place them on an ADT. Uh, as you can see, the colors are working too. They're a little bit off, but they work. And let's go to some uh, some area. Which have models in the interior. Like this. 5 FPS, guys. And 
and just to show something really important for the motors. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the object color really plays an important role in all of this. Like if you just set it to white, it's going to look out of place here. Uh, but I've got a solution for this. You don't have to set it manually for each object. Uh, you just uh, click on bake color here and it will just bake the color from the surrounding vertex color and lighting. It's a little bit working wrong right now so I won't show it because it's not accounting all these fancy algorithms that uh, Blizzard is using so sometimes uh, it will end up being black or wrong color simply because I'm not doing enough uh, math on these colors. Uh, but well, that will come eventually. Uh, there's also a set of tools to replace doodad sets by their name, to create different doodad sets. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. Aren't the LOD WML part a regular WML mesh with all the materials baked into one diffuse? We have a decimated mesh. Uh, I can't really answer. I think Marlamin knows more about it. And probably it's written on Vada Vicky, but I wouldn't be so sure about that. Uh, I guess we can now move on to some more interesting things. Actually, we we'll won't move to M2s right now. I'll show you something really cool, and that's going to be cameras. Let me get this here real quick. So with this add-on, you'll be able to uh, create this flyby uh, cameras uh, that can actually work in the game, but you can use them for animation. I think they're pretty good. They meet all the standards, mostly. Uh, you can animate the target for the camera. You can animate the camera pass and all that stuff. So just for showcase, this is an uh, Azora Palantir. That's what they call it. It's like, uh, if you remember the quest in Elven Forest was was that tower. Uh, well, okay, I guess. Let me get this real quick. It's Magic Tower, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna spend the tower. Does anybody know how it's actually called? The tower. Uh, well, yeah, but I, I, I need the file name. Mage tower. Yeah, makes sense. What am I even typing? It's getting too late that they can see what I'm typing anymore. <laughs> uh, no. Mage, Mage Tower without an underscore. I should have prepared this one, but I forgot. I'm sorry for that. That one will do. Let's give it a few seconds to import. Let's let's turn all that stuff off. So I'm just leaving the indoor and the outdoor so we're not disturbed by any technical things here. I'm switching back to M2 scene type. And let's switch to the camera view. I'll make sure that the camera clip is quite high. So we can see what, what the camera is actually capturing. But I actually don't remember where it is. Yep, here. Let's, let's set it to 10,000. So now we can see everything.
keep forgetting where I put all my things. I guess now I just need to play an animation, that's it. Let's get my timeline here. Now let's go. Yeah, this is an in-game camera system that works in Blender. I had to create it from scratch. It's not the default Blender camera system. But as you can see, it's doing pretty much the same thing as the WoW camera does. Well, I'm sorry for doing the renders wrong because I have no idea about how to use the cameras and so on. I'm just developing things in Blender. Uh, but as long as it works, it's fine. Last time I tried this, it's on my YouTube channel. <laughs> the lighting was not there. It was looking pitch bright in there. Anyway, I'll show you in a second how these cameras can be easily created. I actually fucked it up right now because it's, it's moved its position, so let's get it back. So as you can see, we got this curve here. This is a regular uh, Bezier curve that you can create just like this. You can create different points with it. And for animating the camera, you need to use uh, two kind of two kinds of curves. Let me hide the tower, and I'll show you. Should have actually made it on a separate scene. I guess I can do it this way, yeah. So what goes is this set of curves. This one is for camera target. So the camera target, which is essentially the object to where the camera is pointing, it's um, it can be animated as well. And the camera will automatically look at it when it's flying. So it's pretty much all you need for camera animations. Uh, so after you create this curve, You'll just take it. Let me let me merge it to just one curve. It can be done here. Let's switch back to M2, the scene. I can just compose a curve, which uh, makes a big individual curve out of the segments, which you can add it. You can add new. Uh, splines to the end of it. You can adjust the easing for you know the turns. You can do all that kind of stuff with control points. And what's more important you see the old motion pass because that stuff still stays there. So let's let's just move it right like this and adjust the easing. Like this. What I do now is uh Actually, I'll make it more complicated. I'll find the end of the curve. I'm not sure if I can because it's rather messy there. Blizzard has done something wrong here. Uh, well, let's let's look at the chat now. I don't know how this works in Maya, guys. I suppose this is the last point, or is it not? Maybe this one? Well, that's Blizzard's fault, not mine, that I can show you uh, this to you. Uh, but I'll explain you in, uh, in a few seconds. Uh, this was created in early stages of Classic, so it's kind of understandable. I heard that they used a uh, Quake editor to model the levels, so everything else about Classic is pretty much explainable. Well, this is how it works, in short. Uh, basically, you have this curve, which is just one single object, and then you got the camera. In the camera, you have this. Uh, Basically, the whole animation system for cameras lined up. I'll make it a little bit bigger so you can actually see what's going on here. Like this. 
So these are the segments of the currently active curve, which I uh, composed into a single object and then edited it. So what, what I now need to do, I'll decompose this curve. I'll select uh, baked curve here and I'll check this preserve timing which will actually decompose the curve, remove the old one and will preserve the time uh, that's needed. Uh, it's not the time, it's frames that I needed to uh, pass uh, between the two points of the curve to travel along one spline. So you can control the speed individually between two splines just like the game camera does. So it's really safe to use and you will get exactly the same result as in the game. You can put this back in the game and it will look ex uh, exactly the same and it will be working just fine. And you can do exactly the same thing for uh, the target. All right, let's Let's, I guess, switch to something else. Uh, that I think I'll show is probably not M2 related because I actually forgot one important thing. I've been asked about it already and uh, I would like to bring this, uh, bring this up on the stream. Uh, so I was asked, uh, where do these textures go uh, when you import stuff with Model Viewer? And I'll, I'll show you. It all works. So I get this folder, Blender Cache, and I got the settings for everything in the add-in. So you open it up here. What am I even typing? So the first thing is. Um, the client obviously because it needs to read from the MPQs or cask if it's uh, it's a newer client it will detect which one it is automatically in the future but for now it's only supports uh, rapid leech king because I haven't yet updated it to the further versions uh, and uh, there is also this uh, model viewer lock which is used for connecting uh, connecting the add-on to the viewer so it can uh, take the last model that you opened and know which which one it is to import. Uh, this is a shitty solution, but I, I can't find a better way to do it. So it's, it's really dependent on uh, model viewer now. This one is uh, is not important. It's just something I used for debugging and for a new feature. I actually tested ADT import uh, on it. Uh, I don't have terrain yet, but I'm able to import objects that are on terrain. Uh, but it will change in the future because I will make a proper reading system for ADTs as well. Because right now I just used uh, a text output from some old uh, ancient tool. I won't be showing this on the stream anyway. And the rest is uh, Blender Cache and the project folder where it's, uh, it can output all the saved models too. So all your assets are going to be stored in the cache folder. And it doesn't only refer to textures. You also can choose, let me just find some some folder which holds some models in it. Oh, that's going to be hard. Uh, but basically how all these doodads are important. Let me, uh, let me get this tower back here for a second. Actually, this is a nice place to show that multiple doodad sets are supported. So this is, yeah, this set will do. So as you can see, I'm able to move these models here but I can't enter the edit mode. Even if when I'm clicking, when I'm trying to apply rotation and scale, apply object transform, it's just not gonna work 
it's going to fail uh, because um, this object is actually linked from a library. This way it's working safer, this way it's, it renders faster because it's, it's technically an instance uh, of an object. And this way, if, if it changes in the client, it changes in all of your scenes at once when you update it in the library. And that stuff is getting cached in the folder, so you don't need to waste time on reading this geometry every time you import models. So in the future, I'll make a feature that will uh, convert all the game files to Blender format and they will just uh, be stored in this cache, so you'll be able to import any models within seconds. That's pretty much it. As you can see, I'm able to switch to different sets. It's all working. All good colors and stuff. Okay, let's get to M2s. Something more interesting. I guess I'll I'll start with NPCs first. I'll start with this Murloc. That was the first model I've ever made working in Blender. This one. And it's not rendering because I'm right now in a GLSL mode. So you see this, this Morlock doesn't have any texture in it. Uh, just because uh, some textures in WoW they are referenced through the DBC files, uh, so that like basically one NPC can have multiple skins in it. And I found a solution to this, because right now it's just it's not having any textures on. Uh, if you when you'll be importing M2s from Model Viewer just the same way I did with uh, WMOs. you'll get this filled up automatically but right now it's it's really alpha and so on so I'll have to type that in and that's gonna be creature murloc uh, baby murloc plated dot m2 or mdx is also supported the extension and right now if I open up search and type in creature editor you're gonna see this this floating window it's gonna be used for dressing up your NPCs for editing the actual displays IDs for games so it has use, uses both for um, machinima artists and both for uh, motors so right now it just finds one model data entry for this uh, Morlock and then it shows just one uh, display variation for it so right now it shows me some options that I can set up. None of this is working except for uh, texture loading. It's all here now. But in the future it will support a lot more. Uh, okay, uh, when are you going to release this? I'm going to release this when it's done. Uh, and I, I don't have a definite answer to this because uh, I have a lot of things to do but uh, I'll try to do it as fast as possible. It's already uh, getting closer to the end. It's it's not in the middle, it's already closer to the end. Because I've got most of the stuff running just to just to tell you about the plans though. Uh, what I want to do is uh, I want to finish M2 export. I want to finish all the rendering for everything and I want to probably finish some editing tools and that's it. Uh, that's when I'm making the initial release of this thing. Um, well, then the, re uh, the rest of the features that I'll be making uh, will probably be particles. I'll make support for particle system from WoW in Blender, if it's possible. I don't know yet. Um, will you add a clone animation option? I'm not sure what, what you mean by this, but you're able to create any kind of animation you want. 
also I really want uh, a generated rigs to make it to uh, to the initial release. I, I'm actually researching on that matter right now. I was working on it before the stream, and if it's successful, I would really like that to be in the initial release too. Uh, but I guess after after I release uh, the first version, I'll be working on particles mainly because that that's going to be hell. Uh, they're just way too different from the Blender system, and I'll I'll just have to manually map it to to it. A lot of testing, a lot of switching between the game, just seeing what all the parameters do, all that stuff. It's going to be done later, after the release. So don't worry, I won't uh, dive into this rabbit hole before releasing. So. Don't expect particles to come in it. Uh, but on the other hand, it will support editing particles too. So you'll be able to import particles, but they will stay as uh, just sliders in the UI. It's the same way as uh, the StarCraft add-in for Blender handles it. They weren't able to render them, but I probably will. I hope so. Uh, but at first, it will be just getting saved, and you'll have the option to manually adjust some settings, like uh, play with the data a little bit. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, let me just read the chat just to make sure I didn't miss any important questions. Uh, yeah, I know that the complex stuff is not needed, and anyway, I'll I'll really want to. Do the character character rigs? Well, well, we'll we'll see about the rigs. It's just I'm I'm not really confident about that since I don't know how to animate myself. I don't know how all these rigs work yet. I'll have to read on this. I'll have to watch tutorials, and after that, I'll have a more definite answer on this question. Uh, but anyway, let let just let's just show you something that I made. Uh, this is basically an extension, a big extension that might as well make it into a separate add-in in the future uh, that I'm going to release as well for like general purposes. This stuff is basically the way to manipulate animations for WoW models because they... Uh, wait, I'll just... I'll bring another model here so we can see it better because it, it's really hard in this Morlock. Let's get Arthas into Blender. Uh, and Z is asking, can you just keyframe the sliders? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, but like, why are you asking that? Okay, so this is classic Arthas. I actually don't know if they made a new one. And he's got a real problem with being transparent, but I think that doesn't matter for now. I'll fix that in the future. Not this one. Let's get animation editor going here. So basically this thing allows you to switch in between the imported animation sequences you can search for animations and it will sort the list as you can see everything is working here you can change the playback time which really depends on the CPU somehow so right now it's just 3 FPS but it's working better Uh, you can also place this in reverse here. You can reset the pose to a pose. There are two kinds of animations. You can mark the animations that are stored within the anim files. Uh, so th this little thing here means prime uh, primary sequence. So basically what WoW does, it stores animations in uh, 
different kind of way. Like some animations that I constantly use, like running, jumping, walking, that stuff is stored in an M2 model. And the rest of uh, animations, like emotes, stuff that people don't normally use that often, uh, is stored into in the separate files, uh, which are uh, they're doing some lazy loading on the fly this way. They're, they're saving some uh, RAM, I guess, for people. And this thing allows you to do exactly the same thing if you export that stuff back to the game, which is really important for model editors, which probably will want to add their own custom animations here. Uh, so you can mark this as a primary sequence or as an additional sequence. Then what is this? I actually forgot what this is doing. This The animation uses transformation data from another sequence, changing its action won't affect uh, the in-game track. Oh, this uh, th this stuff, when it when it's like this, when it shows the ghost icon, uh, it's actually, uh, like for some models, they skip uh, animations, like they can reuse, for example, stand animation. Like there might be uh, three variations are very quiet, like when uh, the character is standing still, when it's just looking around, uh, when it's doing something else, uh, but some models, some sim simplistic models, mainly from classic version, they just uh, reuse the same exact animation all the time, and you don't have to write it uh, for each animation, you don't have to copy the same block of data. So you can mark them as uh, ghost animations and actually make them point to some other animation instead. Uh, that's, that's really about it. And there is uh, there's also next important feature I would like to show uh, which is uh, the objects panel on the right. The reason why it's here is because Blender does not support per scene animations. It only supports uh, stuff like, you know, like basically every object has its own uh, its own action attached to it. And for example, the wow animation is not it's not simply the movement of the rig uh, of the skeleton. It's, it's it's more than that. You can animate attachments. You can animate colors. You can animate particles. Uh, you can animate well pretty much everything in the M2 format and just to keep the, the switching to keep switching between animations simple I created this stuff basically every every sequence on the left uh, is uh, stores the pointers to different objects and an action attached to this object for this particular sequence so every time you switch between this it's going to change the actions for all of this. Uh, but what can it do instead? You can always open the NLA. It's it's really important for machining artists. Uh, motors probably don't need this at all because the NLA is like for mixing animations together. And you can just uh, you know stash uh, the active animation into the NLA track. I'll add a separate button for this in the future because when I was making this, which was in winter, I wasn't considering this uh, that this add-on will be actually used by uh, machine animators. So I'll add a lot more features here for uh, NLA stuff as well. Like I'll probably make like a machinima setting. So you, you just go here, uh, check one button, and it will show additional interfaces and tools for machinima makers uh, because. Uh, well, the motors simply won't, won't need this and it will just get in the way. Um, what else? What else Did, should I say about this? And I also got the global sequences. There is a little problem with them. I haven't yet figured out how to line them up and the NLA correctly. So every time I'm playing something with a global sequence, which is basically a sequence that runs all the time, no matter which track is selected. They usually... Uh, stored in the first positions of the list. I think it's working like this. And you can see there is a little issue is that stuff there. I have yet to figure that out. 
his arms just become insanely huge. It's something to do with the NLA editor in Blender that I haven't yet figured out. But this is funny anyway. So j just to show you guys that this tool is absolutely not bug free for now. A lot of bugs, a lot of unfinished places that I'm simply not showing you for now. But it will get fixed in the future. <laughs> yeah, the, the loader on back is, is a great way to do it. And here is a bunch of uh, settings. Again, you can change the type of the animation which goes into the game. Oh, someone is actually restreaming me. Awesome. Thanks for that. Most of that stuff is not figured out yet. I guess there is not there is not much to show about this animation system anymore. And we can get to the next thing that I wanted to show. It's already get going closer to the end, so if you guys feeling overloaded, uh, just stay a little while. We'll be finished probably in, in a bit. Well, you, you kind of get this, uh, that this thing is working correctly, so we can probably jump on to the next thing. Uh, Wait, can this tool of your import custom animations into the game? Yes, because it's it's meant for two purposes, model editing and uh, in Cinema. So we will be able to save it back to the game. Uh, but I really have to make an important uh, notice here. I, I don't really approve the hacking use of this tool. I know that nothing can stop people from using that, but I really don't recommend you doing that. You can do hacks with this tool, but this is not meant for it. This is meant for art. So don't don't do this stuff. Uh, otherwise, you're just attracting unnecessary attention from, I don't know, Blizzard, because people like previously, uh, previously people would just create tools like Nogit and they would could problem there was uh, they would cause problems on the retail service and people would just dig uh, like passages underneath Warzone Battleground and just pass through. Yeah, obviously you can do hack edits with anything. I'm just saying that don't abuse that stuff because that's really dangerous and this can get closed because of that. Just like Free Fire Side did. I don't know to what extent it's true, uh, but Free Fire Side got closed as far as I know for doing something with the in-game memory. And the way this tool works is actually safer, like for all, all kinds of uses. It's not it's not interacting with the game's memory. So it, it it won't be detected by the warden because it's not doing anything with the game, which is completely against uh, the terms of use. Uh, so that's that stuff is pretty much handled if you use it correctly. But if you don't, well, you're going to get problems with it. Okay, uh, so let's move on to spells, I guess. As far as I know, for now, you didn't have an option at all to make videos with spells, right? You, you had to invent them on your own in 3D. But this is probably going to change it. So I uh, found a few spells that I'd like to show. That sucks. I hope Blizzard doesn't pull anything like this. Because that would really be stupid. So, th this is a spell. Uh, ignore this transparency issues because it's just Blender, Blender's viewport and it's doing shit. But if you switch to render view, if it's gonna work at all when I'm, when I'm actually showing this uh, on stream. I don't see, it's, it's probably not working. No. Uh, but anyway, it's it's not there in render view. And it won't be here for um won't be here for 2.8 version. Oh 
did I set it to Russian? Hold on. I'll fix it. It's already the end, but still. I'll I'll uh, I'll be telling something important in the end, so it's getting closer to the end. But stay a while for a few minutes, so I'll need to say something important in the end. Um, well, so wh why why I'm showing you this is because the the spells in in WoW they can actually use different kinds of animation. Uh, this one would miss particles because I don't have them rendered, and as you notice, it's called Death and Decay. It's the Death Knight spell. And, um, well, it's not looking like that in the game, but I've developed a system which, which is completely new to Blender, because before, before that you, you weren't able to animate notes in Blender and see the result uh, immediately in the viewport. That just, uh, the problem was the, the so-called dependency graph in Blender. But, I solved this for 2.79 and it's not going to be an issue in 2.8 because the developers will fix it. I told them, uh, I made a report about this and I hope this will get fixed. So now as you can see it's working but it's rendering at 3 FPS in the viewport. So basically what you can do, like uh, every material has its own WoW settings here and you can assign uh, not to a material but I think to texture. Let me see where it is. Yeah, every texture has this color setting and you can basically uh, colorize the texture uh, by just, uh, let me hold on, let me pull this up. You can keyframe the sliders uh, with with colors and attach these colors to the texture. So this way they will uh, change the appearance. Let me stop this because this is getting really slow. It's doing a lot of work when recalculating the shader in every frame. Uh, so if you find this color here and you see I'm changing it and it's recoloring the spell. So this all can be animated and this transparency panel is doing exactly the same thing. And this is how they, they're doing this fade out in the end. So you see it's animated and it's fading out. And probably the last feature that I'm going to show you. samples where is it let me just pull up this waterfall here so the last one to show would be UV animations while it supports any main UVs just like any like just like the bone for example let me set this to stand, and as you can see, it's it's moving. So how this this is all done? Because Blender by default does not support any uh, UV animations, so I had to hack a system on top of it again. Uh, basically, you would have this. You have a just set with a texture in it. And then you add a special controller with this button, which will be bound to the texture and will control its mapping. So you can move it around and as you can see the UV is moving as well. So for instance, I can just uh, keyframe its location here, then I can move it by this, no, this axis a little bit and set and set this in a different frame. And as you can see, it's it's doing some sort of animation. It's working in reverse, but it doesn't matter. I just had to move it into 
uh, in other direction. Yeah, but that's basically it. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to show for now. Uh, but there will be a lot more. And I have to, as I said before, I have to tell an important thing now. And a lot of people are probably going to hate me for that. And for, I don't know, the wasted hour and a half of their life. And I feel like the viewers will be decreasing in a second. So, uh, just because I spent so much time in it, I, um, I decided not to release the Saturn 4 completely free. But uh, there are a lot of reasons for it. I'll explain it in a second. But I'll I'll, I'll keep it cheap. I'll keep it about the same uh, price as the Machinima DAF tool, if you remember it. Uh, so let, let's now talk about the reason. Just uh, so nobody uh, nobody else has questions about that. I should have drink some water. Mouth gets dry when you talk a lot. Uh, okay, so uh, basically uh, I'm already in a minus. I don't know if I can say this in English, but uh, I basically paid some money already to do this. I had to buy some software and I had to buy some help sometimes. Some people, some great people would just help for free, but not everybody. Sometimes I just had to buy uh, some information and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, I sort of need to cover these expenses. And I also kind of want some, you know, reward for this work because uh, I've been trying to find some people who might, uh, who might help me with development. Uh, but apparently all those people who agreed, uh, they just uh, would not... Uh, you know start doing anything because they just and I don't blame them for that because they, they can't find their way around my project it's it's so huge like all these folders here I'm, I'm showing you the code now this is the library for reading the assets and this is the stuff for working with m2s and all wait, all of these files the they'll actually learn like they have a lot of code in there usually in most cases so it's a lot of work that's what I'm saying uh, yeah I know but uh, I've just had some reactions about that already and you know I, I, I thought about it the first idea would be to uh, create a tool that's that has some kind of free version of it and then I could make like a better version of it which which would have to be like more expensive so I decided to keep it really cheap so everybody can afford it it's it's not going to be uh, expensive at all because i'm not trying to rip anybody off here uh but it will be better that everyone will have access to the same same kind of tool it won't be uh like the free version is shitty the paid version is so much better but it's like 70 bucks or something so i'm, I'm keeping this cheap and then keeping it paid but by keeping it paid and cheap uh I can lower the price. That's 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 the math about it. Uh, well, I, I've thought about the Blizzard reaction, but uh, t technically, w what I'm doing here is that um, I'm not I'm not making a cheating software. I'm saying that once and for all, this is not intended for cheating. Like uh, you can you can hack the game even without this tool. You can hit the game with the tools that are already published in there for free. Uh, this tool is meant for art. And then Machinima is uh, licensed. So what you guys are doing, if you don't know yet, this is actually licensed. Uh, modding of the game is kind of in a little shady area. That's another topic. Uh, but Machinima is absolutely legal. Uh, Blizzard was one uh, of the first companies to make uh, Machinima legal, as far as I know. Uh, and speaking what 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 Graham Love just says about uh, profiting of their content, I'm not profiting of their content because I'm not delivering any single bit of their content with this add-in. It's it's all mostly based on uh, 
the publicly available information like Wada Wiki, it's it's all Blender based. Uh, it's using some open source, some closed source libs and stuff like that. Uh, so it's not using anything from the game at all. And by the way, like Wow had or st websites like that, they're profiting of their content even more because they're actually profiting of content. They're making databases, uh, like they would make uh, data mining screenshots and stuff like that. That's more related to content than this. This is a tool for artists to do their art. And I don't think that Blizzard will ever have a problem with that. If they do, uh, it won't disappear. I'll just, I'll just, uh, like if they say you should stop selling it for money, I'll just stop it. Well, I would have nothing to do. But if they don't, well, as you can see, that Machinima Dev uh, tool was up for like a few years already, and they don't think it has ever received anything from Blizzard. So if if something like that happens, uh, I'll just stop selling it. I'll just release it for free. It will be on GitHub, and everyone will just uh, have access to it. That's no problem. Uh, well, that's that's pretty much it, and uh, you guys can, can pretty much go. But uh, I wanted to show, uh, just to use the situation of having 42 people right now, and I just want to show the project that I've been working on to uh, to you guys, uh, just for s some sort of promotion. Let me pull up some links. Uh, if you want, you can see the galleries of it in the in the description. Uh, there are links to Reddit and Reddit and model changing where you can see the screenshots and I'll be showing some things in the game and some of these things uh, were made by uh, basically I was working on some maps uh, Bard uh, maybe you know this guy from MCNet and Modcraft and his brother they were working uh, on some maps as well and uh, Belkron, whom you might know from Wild of Discord, he was uh, modeling uh, WMO assets for us. I'll show you some things now. Where should I start? I think Lordaeron would be the best spot. So in case anybody's wondering, this is a role-playing server project. Uh, that I've been working on as a designer for and since recently I'm mostly making tools and Quart's been doing level design work and stuff so let's just uh, wait until it loads you can ask questions about the project or about the add-in while I'm still here and while this is on 355A right now, we are currently in process of moving to Legion. So we'll be uh, we'll be running with better graphics in a few days, hopefully. And speaking about Dalaran's, uh, yeah, it will take three gigs of RAM. That's right. That's that's probably how it, uh, exactly the same amount of RAM it took for me. Let me set the lighting today so you can see better what's going on here. So this is our current Lordaeron build that we're currently rebuilding to match the BFA style. You know, the new wall that they made. We're actually going to take that wall and we're going to recreate the city in the same style inside. But for now, it's uh, see it in this. Wait a second, I have to delete some comments from the chat.
uh, why not? People still play it in 2018. Uh, but we are mostly here enough for playing it anyway. So th this whole stuff is built in Nogget and it's pretty lame here. Because you can see all this, uh, like, cracks and you can see that it's it's like m manually sampled out of facets. Like, there's, there's very little style to it and sometimes it'll just lag the shit out of it. Uh, but we will change that in the future and it will look beautiful. Uh, they won't create their own water on because they basically gave up on this. They just made this wall uh, around it and they stopped. They won't be updating it. That's what I'm sure about. Well, it will look a lot better. I actually worked on this model. This 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 model is partially made with the the add-on. Uh, at first, it was uh, made by uh, Sheldon and was sold to to us, I guess. Uh, before I joined the team, and basically he didn't have tools at the moment to build it correctly, so this thing would be all ripped apart, like ge geometry would be just bad. So I was fixing all that stuff manually, removing cracks uh, from the walls, but it's still not looking as good as it should. Uh, let me show you some surrounding areas. Uh, this is the zone I've worked on. Uh, I added these trees. Uh, this is recolored trees from Legion that were modified in this foliage here. And this is our new Braille. Um, I won't answer these questions. Yeah, well, let's just not pay attention to this, I guess. I don't know how to ban people on Discord, but not Discord, uh, Twitch. Which wall? Oh, the, the, the Saurian wall. I'll show you uh, in a few minutes when we get there. Oh, shit, I'm bumping into trees. So we, we've updated all these farm fields and it's, it's still running with a little bit uh, incorrect lighting. So it's not, it's not the uh, final atmosphere here. I think I'd personally get rid of this wall we don't need a wall here. And that's some bug stuff. Probably because I have specular maps uh, turned on. Uh, I don't know any famous WoW players. Uh, this cool atmosphere, by the way, is created by Bard. It's not, it's not done by me. He worked on this little area here. And this is going to be a playable server, actually. This is Death Knell, which we renamed to something else. I, I, I can't remember the name. Maybe uh, Valerian can remind me. Because he's, uh, he's directing the project and he knows all that stuff. But there is basically some other name in the lore for this. And this is a uh, night elf area we have there, but I can't go there because we got a bug with the MFBO. Yeah, Wondermar village. And this is personally my favorite one. Uh, Silver Pine. We've updated the assets here. So it looks more vivid, uh, but maybe I'll be uh, doing uh, changes to the color scheme together with the with our modeler. It's, uh, it's getting really hard to fly here because of a giant model that's standing just right there. 
Uh, good, well, goodbye, Master Vortex. Hopefully, you'll get some success with uh, character rigs. So, we've got this uh, lumber mills here, we've got farms, all that stuff. There's still something wrong with the atmosphere. I, ca I can't get what, but it's good, but it's not. <laughs> If you guys have any ideas, feel free to uh, comment on something, something that you would want to change, maybe. Yeah. This were my attempts to fake uh, terrain lighting in 335A. Fortunately, we don't have to use it anymore since we're going to Legion. We can just use proper lights. Uh, this is what? Where is the gate? <laughs> Where is the bloody gate? There's supposed to be a gate, but it's gone. I hope it's not what I think it is, because uh, if if we've got a UAD problem here, it's it's not gonna go away by itself. Uh, well. You see this, right? It's right there. Delaran. And Belkron has retextured the buildings to kind of match the Gilnea style, but we specifically didn't want to use the Gilnea assets here because it's sort of like a bridging zone between Lodron and the uh, Gilnea. Uh, so we used, uh, I guess, like Northland assets recolored in a specific way. This is all done with the add-on, by the way. He remapped the UV maps, he changed the textures. So th that's just uh, that's just the proof of what the add-on can do. It's all exported back to game. Th this thing was in Blender before it got into game. So it's all working, it's all completely game ready. What is called Lagaran. Yeah, that, that's def <laughs> that's definitely the name for it. That's a good one. Uh, but um, I'll actually uh, we'll fix that when we move to Legion. There's just something wrong with my expert algorithm that uh, makes the giant models lag a little bit, but it will get fixed eventually. Uh, we've repaired the Shadow Fan Keep, which is also getting updated. It's currently in the process of uh, development. Pyrewood, my version of it. It's it's different from Cataclysm, but still pretty much the same. Uh, did you ever work on destructible WMOs? No, I have not worked on this. In fact, I'm not quite sure how they work. Uh, there's just regular Gilnez there for now. Nothing special. I just edited it from Cataclysm. Uh, let's move on to Hillsborough Hills. Uh, that's still buggy here. I hate when this happens. Now we're getting a crash here. Yep. Okay, reason number one thousand why my add-in is better than Machinima tool. It's because it's not uh, crashing when you use your numpad keys. Because this tool is super annoying. It's it's crashing like hell. I'm I don't know what's going on here. We probably spawned a faulty asset in there. I'll try to fly away from that area. Maybe we'll be able to get away from this. Uh, 
I'll have to teleport my character out of this. Oh shit, why did I do this? It's gonna crash again. I'm stupid. It's just way too late. I'm very tired and uh... I can't even speak good English anymore and uh, I forget what I'm doing. Let's go, just this one. Oh, come on. That stuff is all in the crashy areas. Is there any way possible to make 335 show more than full lighting in one viewable area? Uh, just as Schlumpf says, uh, possible but not feasible. That, that would be my answer to this. Hopefully it's not Dalaran that's giving the crash. Because I kinda sorta of wanna show this to you. Can I get rid of this rain somehow? I'm kind of afraid to fly far away from this. Wait, hold on a second. Let's let's set some good environment here, so you can see better. This is made with the add-in. Important stuff, guys. This is actually to the point of the stream. This is what Belkron made. Uh, using the add-in. He basically uh, removed the entire bottom part of Delaran, this like giant rock that was at the bottom, and he built this wall around it, and we had to remove the uh, the fortress, I forgot what, uh, what its name was, the Amethyst Citadel or something like this. Uh, it's just simply not there in the lore as far as I know. So he made this little area by just placing a few buildings around. This is uh, for like role play and stuff. So this has all come through Blender. And as you can see it's working just fine. And if I go into one of, uh, one of these it's still keeping all the lighting, all the doodads. Also rebuild some do that sets here because this is not supposed to be a horde in anymore. Still has blood elf stuff. I don't know why he didn't remove it. Well, that's basically our version of Delaran. Uh, 
Uh, yes, it should be possible to remove file from ca uh, files from cask. I would suppose with cask host. Uh, did I forget to show something? Parent mill. Oh, and you wanted the wall. It's just, just right here, and it's closed. We've repaired it, but it still has this, like, bad UV mapping and stuff, and also this kind of box that we need to fix. Well, that's that's basically it. I think we're about to to be finished. So if you guys have any other questions, I'm ready to answer them about the ad and about the project, about anything else that you might want to know. Well, I guess that's pretty much it then. Thank you all for watching. I'll be updating progress on that and uh, on my Amsinet channel. I'm s streaming development here sometimes, so you might you may subscribe and come by uh, when you have time to see what's what's going on in the project. Uh, the links to this Lodron follow Lodron project is already in the description of the stream, so you can get all of this. Uh, you can uh, watch the galleries there. And I'll be updating the add on progress on this page. I'll show you in a second. It says it here model changing progress page. It's going to be here. And I guess see you all. Thanks again for coming.